for our hearing impaired viewers. The Redevelopment Agency meeting, as well as all other KCLV programming, can be viewed on the city's website at www.kclv.tv. The proceedings will be rebroadcast on KCLV Channel 2 and the web of the meeting, the Wednesday of the meeting at 8 p.m., and also on Friday at 4 a.m., Saturday at 7 p.m., Sunday at 7 a.m., and the following Monday at 1 p.m. We've already been through uh, the fire test, so I'm not going to make the announcement. Okay. Mr. Vincent, Mr. Adams. Um, Your Honor, uh, item number three is uh, a notice of um, possible augmentation of the redevelopment agency um, uh, debt service fund. The debt service fund is where all of our tax increment revenues are. Let me read it into the record, okay? Discussion of possible action regarding notice of intent to augment and amend the fiscal year 2008 annual budget of the City of Las Vegas Redevelopment Agency Debt Service Fund. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, again, item three is a, is a notice of the augmentation that we would do with the um, June 18th meeting. And as I mentioned, uh, most of the revenues or all of the tax increment revenues go into the debt service fund and then are transferred out where they're needed to projects or debt service. Um, we have um, in excess of $5 million in uh, tax increment revenues that we did not budget for. And so this augmentation notice is for the affordable housing portion, which is about uh, which 18 percent, which is almost a million dollars of tax increment revenues we're trying to augment out to the uh, affordable housing um, special revenue fund for the city. The remaining uh, revenues that would be um, that are excessive or budget will roll over into fiscal year 2009 and are being used to help us uh, with the uh, the uh, bond program that we're issuing next year for not only Union Park, um, but also the postmodern project as well as refinancing some existing debt. Um, I thought you might be interested, I have on the overhead here a uh, little history of tax increment for the RDA back to 1997. And uh, you'll see that from 97 to about 2005, we're kind of languishing in the seven, eight million dollar range. Um, and you can see some tremendous growth from uh, six, seven, eight, and nine. Nine is a budget number. Uh, 2008 is an actual, uh, an actual tax increment number. So it's very possible that 2009 will come in higher, uh, possibly closer to uh, 25 and a half million dollars. You might be interested to know that the growth rate <clears throat> for that 12-year period is about 10% per year. But if you look just at the last six years from, say, 2003 through 2009, that growth rate's been uh, in excess of 21%. And I thought you might be interested to know that. So uh, this is just a, a, the, uh, the notice of the intent to augment, and we'll do the augmentation next meeting. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask you whether or not uh, this graph is indicative of uh, predicting uh, a future uh, tax increment. Uh, can we assume that it's going to keep on going up, or could there be an event which would cause it to level off or go down again? I, I don't. Th Let me answer your question this way: the, the growth that we're seeing is driven by the success of the redevelopment projects and the things that we're currently we have been doing. To the extent that we can continue to sustain that, <clears throat> um, to the to the extent that the economy allows developers to continue to participate. Um, I think over time we'll see some significant growth, but I think the rate of growth is going to slow down a little bit, but it's still going to be extremely healthy. I would expect it to be healthier than, much healthier than our general fund. But it's, um, the growth you've seen from 2006 to 2008, for example, that's really uh, driven quite a bit by uh, the programs that you've put in place and some of the uh, tax increment uh, programs that we've done with folks like World Market Center and the Chelsea Outlet Mall with the, the projects we have on the books today. So, Well, assume uh, that the Jewel will open and be successful, just as an example. Will that have a dramatic impact? Um, some of the Jewel construction and progress is already in here. What happens, the part, part of the reason why uh, you, you might, no one's been polite, everyone's been polite enough not to ask the Director of Finance, how did you miss the revenue so bad? Well, that $5 million is principally construction and progress. So we did pick up things like Jewel and Streamline and things that were in process. So the assessor does go out and assign a value to uh, construction and progress to date. So that's what's happening. We just had a tremendous period of growth. And uh, as long as the 
the uh, financial markets and the economy uh, continue to encourage developers to come here and work with the, the city of Las Vegas. I, I think we'll continue to see some significant growth. I don't know that you'll see it. Uh, we have one year that it's a 46% growth. We almost doubled practically, and, and uh, not doubled, but we uh, grew by almost 50% in one year, and I don't think uh, that'll happen. But uh, I think it's going to be uh, significant, continue to be significant growth in the teens to 20%. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Vincent? Yes, sir. Yes. Mr. Vincent, for our viewers at home who are perhaps uh, watching for the first time or are new to tax increment financing, mm -hmm. could you just give about a two- or three-minute uh, TIF 101, so people understand what we're talking about. The redevelopment agency gets all of its revenue from uh, property taxes that represent the growth in the property taxes from a base year. So in the year that we create the redevelopment agency, we've got, I think, four different districts that have four different start dates. But from year one, when we establish the redevelopment agency, all the tax increment, all the property tax growth from that base year um, a substantial portion of it, not all of it, but a substantial portion of it gets reallocated to the redevelopment agency under the redevelopment law. That tax increment, which is which is revenues that are wholly tri attributable to increase in, in value from either construction or even uh, just uh, market value since the inception of the redevelopment agency, we can take those revenues and we can use those revenues to sell bonds, to pay back bonds. We can use those revenues to reimburse developers for um, a development costs, particularly site-related costs. Um, we, as of late, when we were sort of languishing down in the, in the sort of the, the eight, nine million dollar range, we started doing a tax increment rebate program, which we call TIF financing, but it essentially um, what it is is we give them a promissory note for their improvements that they have made that were uh, eligible for reimbursement, and then we pay off that note based on the tax increment that their project generates, a percentage of that. And, and so that's sort of a, a rebate program that, that we've done. Now it's growing so significantly that we're looking at um, uh, bond issue in the, in the neighborhood of 130 or more million dollars next year, and this tax increment growth is going to be paying off that debt. So um, that's essentially the 101 course. Thank you, and if you don't mind, Mayor, is there anything else we can do in the next uh, 12 to 24 to 36 months to provide further incentives to developers, recognizing that we're in a recession and recognizing that times are tough, et cetera, to further uh, enhance or further uh, draw development into the RDA? Um, I'm not sure what else we would do that we're not already doing. We, uh, we business development uh, has a program where they obviously walk developers through. We do it as much as we can to expedite their uh, pre-construction pre process. Um, we certainly um, uh, have uh, looked differently at how we're doing our tax rebate or tax increment financing. We've uh, altered that. Um, in, in certain cases with certain developers. So uh, there, other than um, using these tax increment revenues to pay for a different set of expenditures, I don't know what we would do. Um, it's, a, it's a fixed, and in essence, the, 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 all that the redevelopment agency can do is, is, is going to be done with these revenues. You certainly could pay fees for it. You certainly could... Um, uh, could rebate it. You certainly can use it to sell bonds that would help supplement projects. For example, the Mob Museum, um, that would be a city project, a city, um, ultimately city-owned facility, but it does help in augment, uh, supplement, if you will, or, or um, increase in value the CIM project if that were to go forward around that. So there's just about anything that we, you can think of that we can use this revenue for, we've, we've done. So we, we try to be as creative and flexible mm -hmm. Flexibility probably is the biggest issue, I think, for us. As long as we're flexible and, and keeping your eyes open to different ideas, I think we're um, we're doing a good job. See, I'm a little more optimistic than you, Mr. Vincent, as always. Uh, I, I think that when <coughs> CIM begins to renovate the uh, mm -hmm. uh, Lady Luck and uh, expands their project down here, that that's going to affect this. I think when Live Work and... Uh, there, those folks uh, do the five block area. I think that's going to affect this, even though there'll be some public buildings there. But I, I really see this as being the 
the future uh, for uh, at least the inner city. It, it very well could. It very well could continue this growth or even be steeper. I'm just so the jewelry, the jewelry mart should be a, a phenomenal addition to the tax roll, should it not? It would be very significant. Yes, it, um, the hotels, yeah. Charlie Palmer Hotel. Well, yeah. Okay, well, I'm, I'm much more optimistic. That's why I, I want you to have a little bubble in your brain, <clears throat> which says arena on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> I carry it in my pocket. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other comments or questions? I have a motion, please. Which follow staff recommendation for augmenting? All right. Let's vote, please. Vote. Motion carries. Thank you very much. All right. Item number four is report and possible action regarding redevelopment agency projects currently under contract or negotiation. Other projects proposed or under construction with or in or near the redevelopment area and to provide an overview of programs and initiatives pertaining to wards one, three, and five. Mr. Adams. Good morning. Uh, Scott Adams, the operations officer of the redevelopment agency. I'm going to be walking you through our quarterly PowerPoint update that kind of walks you through all the different projects and initiatives that are uh, that are underway within the Las Vegas redevelopment area. Um, as always, I'll start with the Union Park District, and I'm and a lot of this I will go over old ground, but that's for those of who are watching that that maybe are seeing this for the first time. Um, because it, when you put it all in perspective, it's a lot. And I think this underscores what Mark just presented. Uh, there are a lot of things in the pipeline, and, and it's these projects that create real estate taxes that generate that tax increment financing that Mark just referenced in the, uh, the public hearing presentation. Uh, the first big project in uh, Union Park that really has been one of the big drivers downtown has been the World Market Center. And, of course, uh, I don't think anybody has uh, escaped the fact that there are some very, very large buildings out in uh, in this area. Uh, phase one and two are complete. You see those in the picture there. Uh, they're collectively three million square feet of space. And this really gives you a good shot now of the three phases that are complete, uh, phase one and two, and then the third building is now nearly complete. Uh, and you can see it in the lower picture there. You see all three buildings in juxtaposition of each other. And you can see in the lower right-hand corner of that picture the, the tents, the tent structures, and between the tent structure and that third building that's in red is the new parking garage that they uh, are just finishing up. Uh, so with those three, they'll have 5 million square feet of space, a very large parking garage to support all that development, and, and really on their way to... Um, build out of the entire project. They've indicated to us they plan a, f a fourth phase, which will be 1.1 million square feet, uh, which connects with their third building. And they are anticipating a construction start on this late this year with a completion in 2010. Um, this really is another shot showing how all of that looks in context of each other, the entire 12 million square feet build out of the entire project. Um, this has been one of the real big drivers of investment in downtown. Um, what happens in a redevelopment program is, is investors look at what's already been done, they look at that as momentum, and then they realize that that creates and sets up an investment climate for new investment. And so th this has been one of the real big things that people look to as, as an initiator for new investment. Uh, Union Park is another one of those. Uh, Union Park, uh, this is the uh, overview master plan that shows the block layout of the master plan, and then the lower right-hand corner, uh, the bird's eye perspective of how it would look physically as it's all built out. Um, one of the uh, keystone projects there is the Performing Arts Center, the Smith Center for the Performing Arts. They've indicated to us uh, that it's planned to start in uh, 2008, late this year, for completion in 2011, and of course the value of the entire block at complete build-out would be $500 million. And you can see in the lower right-hand corner uh, where it's located within the master plan of Union Park. Uh, the Lou Ruval Brain Institute is another one that's under construction. Uh, the model in the upper left-hand side, uh, the actual construction in the lower left-hand corner, and they're now uh, erecting a lot of the steel that forms the the exciting uh, steel fabric of the Frank Gehry design and, and the lower right-hand picture shows the exact location of that project within the Union Park Master Plan. 
The Rural Jewelry Center is another one of those projects that is a keystone project uh, being done by Probity International. Uh, the sketch of what it'll look like on the left-hand side and, of course, the location within Union Park on the right. This would be uh, 1.3 million square feet of total development, including condos, office space for jewelers and jewelry companies, and then jewelry-related uh, retail space in the ground levels of the project. Newland Communities is uh, building out uh, actually about seven blocks within uh, the Union Park Master Plan. I'll touch on their first phase a little bit later in the presentation. This shows where their planned residential and retail development will take place. The Charlie Palmer Boutique Hotel is in the center of Union Park across Symphony Park from the Performing Arts Center. Uh, they are tweaking the design of this project. Um, to improve uh, its attractiveness and uh, we're excited to uh, see what they come up with in terms of what the ultimate plan will be for this building but that would be about a 400 uh, unit uh, boutique hotel that will feature Charlie Palmer's signature restaurants. Uh, parcel B is really one of the prime parcels that's left to be developed in Union Park. Uh, this was RFP'd recently uh, by Newland Communities on behalf of the city uh, we've received several proposals for the development of Parcel B. We're, we're in the process of evaluating those proposals, making a tentative selection, and negotiating with the tentatively selected party. We hope that that will culminate in a development agreement that we can bring back to you for consideration at some point in the future. Uh, this is what I referenced earlier in terms of Newland's Parcel F development of residential. They're under a development agreement with you for development of those seven blocks. Their first phase would include uh, several hundred units of uh, mixed use, which includes townhomes, mid-rise condos, and high-rise condos with ground floor retail. And these are some sketches, the first sketches released of what this project will look like. Newland is really taking a lot of time to get it right on how they build their residential development. <coughs> they've studied, uh, and a number of us have been privy to this uh, research they've done, They've studied the market nationally, looked at what projects work well, which projects haven't worked well, and taken the benefit of all that research. They've done focus group lo research locally and roll that into their designs for what should be really the premier residential project in downtown Las Vegas. Uh, incidentally, their plan um, would be to, and we'll be coming back to you with uh, an agreement on this, to uh, take down their first parcel next summer and start construction shortly thereafter. Um, Live Work Las Vegas. You approved the master development agreement at the last council meeting. This is showing some massing of, of the Live Work development, but particularly focused on City Hall development on the Queen of Hearts block to show how massing could uh, accommodate a City Hall on that block. We promised you as we did these updates that we'd give you an update on how we're going on, um, on um, Live Work Las Vegas. At this point, we're negotiating a property rights agreement that resolves the um, acquisition of rights from Live Work as well as from us to accommodate the project, to accommodate the uh, Bonneville Clark couplet, as well as the closure of First Street. Uh, we are negotiating an exclusive negotiating agreement for backup rights to parcels C, D, E, F, and G on Union Park. If you remember, they had backup rights to those developments. Uh, we're uh, putting together exhibits to a purchase option agreement and developing that purchase option agreement, which is for the Queen of Hearts block that we'll have as that safety valve during the development. We're looking at two off-site options for providing parking to support City Hall. Uh, those two sites are, one is um, a, a site owned by RTC that we have an option to purchase across the street that would create a bridge between Live Work and Union Park. And then the other is actually in the air rights above the intermodal terminal that will be developed as part of Live Work Las Vegas. So we're looking at two areas where we would build off-site parking in addition to putting it on-site on the Queen of Hearts block and looking at the various costs of those different alternatives to come up the best site for parking for support of City Hall. Uh, we're resolving utility relocations for the Queen of Hearts block. As you know, we have had the Clear Skies plan downtown to underground 
utilities, and we're looking at there's a an alley that runs up through all those blocks that has a number of transmission, distribution, and other lines. We're looking at how to accommodate the undergrounding of those lines, as well as bringing in utilities into the development. And then we are working diligently on all the draft agreements for the transaction documents that we referenced in the master development agreement. So there's a lot of work underway. We continue to meet with um, Forest City on a biweekly basis, virtually all day on Thursdays, uh, to work out all these agreements and uh, arrangements between the city and various parties. The uh, Las Vegas Premium Outlets expansion is complete. I don't know if any of you have been over there recently, but it is jamming. Um, you would never know there's an economic downturn by the number of people and the people that are shopping over at this outlet mall. Um, they've added their 104,000 square feet of space, their new parking garages, and it continues to be uh, really one of the premier outlet malls, not just here, but in America. Um, it is absolutely incredible the number of people that go to this facility. Uh, the Mulaski Corporate Center um, is done. Uh, I think a lot of us has been over there, either in the health club or, um, or in the building itself. It's a premier facility. It's one that a number of investors are now looking at as proving the market downtown for Class A office space. So we're seeing renewed interest in Class A office development downtown. Um, you entitled recently the Grand Central Hotel, <clears throat> which is a 2,500 room hotel on the former Sandhurst site, the former site of the Sandhurst condo project, which also incorporates the site where the crew shack is located for the Union Pacific Railroad. They've merged both those sites, have planned a 2,500 room hotel on the site, which of, this is the, uh, the master plan for that development. So this is another exciting project that comes in as a possible project to get complete over the next several years. As a recap of everything going on downtown, there are 84 projects com completed, 176 projects Con uh, under construction, pending or planned, and $15 billion pending or planned. We have pulled out the REI NEON project, but and that was $10 billion, but we gained another $5 billion of proposed development to replace that. So we've really had a fairly sizable net increase over the base after you take out the REI NEON project, uh, represented by a number of these new projects that you see in this uh, PowerPoint. Going back on some of the residential, we, of course, have had the Soho Lofts opening complete, the Newport Lofts opening complete. They're still selling through units there. The Allure Tower will have its grand opening this evening. Um, we're there now opening complete. Jewel, and this really is some very recent photography of Jewel that shows that a lot of the scaffolding is now off the building. The cladding is up on the building and is really starting to take shape as to what it's going to look like. Uh, and the lower right-hand picture is the rooftop amenity deck where there's a pool and all the amenities that are you really don't see because the, the development wraps around the parking garage and that is on top of the parking garage. So there'll be high-rise urban living on top of the parking garage contained inside their development. Uh, Streamline Tower is another one that we all see out the corners of our window from City Hall, a kitty corner across Las Vegas Boulevard. They are now open and selling three units. And um, you can see um, a shot of that project and what its ground floor retail will look like. The Avenue is a small boutique project on uh, Tonopah near the Medical Center. And Urban Lofts, they've uh, completed the 11th and Carson project with 30 units, 22 of which are sold. They're under construction at Fremont and Bruce with 70 units, 21 under construction, 7 have been sold. And, and again, this is one of those where if you've been by this project in that area, it is a true shot in the arm for that segment of Fremont Street in terms of having a new investment in that location. And I'm going to go back and pick up, I think you've asked that we come back and look at some of the older projects that we've done to remind you and our public that there's been a lot of other past development projects that the city's engaged in the downtown to create housing. One of those is Loctane, which is affordable housing. The city center apartments of 300 units of affordable housing. 
and Campage Place, yes. another th uh, 320 units of affordable housing. So these are older projects that established a base of residential development that we continue to build on within the redevelopment area. Moving on into entertainment development, <laughs> we've completed, the, of course, the Fremont East Entertainment District public improvements. We are now seeing more interest in clubs in that area. Uh, the 7-Eleven, former 7-Eleven building on the corner is planned for development of the Hive, which will be a new nightclub that would occupy that space. They've actually signed a lease on this club. Uh, the Beauty Bar is a development that's been very successful that really was one of the early ones in that set the tone for the district. The Griffin is also one of those, as well as the Downtown Cocktail Room. 601 Fremont is coming on the agenda of this afternoon's council meeting. Um, this is a project where the we own it, the developer is in a friendly termination to give it back to us. These are some very recent photography to show the exterior of the building, but more importantly in the lower right hand corner what the interior of the building looks like. They've invested, while they were under lease with us, several hundred thousand dollars of interior demolition, uh, fire sprinkling, sheet rocking, to demise the lower level into two spaces to ready it for clubs. And so we're, uh, if, should you approve that this afternoon, we're going to really start to market this property and push hard to look at all the different options that are available to us for redevelopment of this site. Mayor Goodman. Yes. If you don't mind. Uh, Councilman, would you like to go? Just a quick question. Scott, uh, what is the property that is just south of 601 East Fremont? South. If, uh, I hate to put you on the spot. It's just a huge block building that doesn't have a lot of windows. I am not, I'm just not even, uh, right, I, I'm, you're catching me off guard here. Um, I think you're, I, I think, when you say I think it's the old Sprint building you're referring to, but that would be, it would uh, be, block uh, to the, uh, uh, the west. Yeah, on Las Vegas Boulevard? Yes. Yeah, the Sprint, that's the Sprint building. Okay. And now that, we've, we've, we've worked with, with, it's actually Embark now, um, yeah. on that building, and the, the issue with that is it is the number, it is the switch for the entire valley. Um, it, it's, it is the communication center and hub of Embark's operations for the whole valley. The, the pipes going in and out of that building are incredible. And to relocate them to get that building redeveloped is a, a phenomenally expensive proposition. So we, we could go back at them uh, in terms of getting something in the ground level of that building, but it's, we've actually talked to them about relocating that so that we could get the building redeveloped. But and they, and they've looked at the feasibility of moving that yeah. switch, and it's very expensive. And that, that's exactly what I was thinking. I'm driving into work this morning, and I'm driving by 601 Fremont, and I'm thinking this is something we're going to discuss today. And as you, as you go just a few feet south, I guess, I see this huge building, and it's you know three or four times the size of 601 Fremont, and I don't think it says embark on the outside of it. It's just blank, and so I'm thinking, you know, what is this? Who owns it, et cetera? And you've just answered that. Yeah, historically, and it, you know, it's weird. There's a number of those in almost every downtown area in America where they started in their downtowns, they built these facilities, and they continue to build up their infrastructure, and then you get to a point where it, it becomes very difficult financially to relocate that because it's it's not easy to do because there's fiber optic cables and just a lot of expensive equipment that becomes very difficult to relocate. Um, another one is that you've entitled is a venue of Vegas. Uh, this is at 760 Fremont, the old dealer school property. Um, this is one where they will tear it down, build this new facility. They're in the, the throes of arranging their financing. I know I personally visited their project in Scottsdale. They have a project called the Venue of Scottsdale, which is a very high quality, nice project. And I'm just hoping this project will take place here because I think if they do what they did in Scottsdale here, it will be a tremendous contribution to the entertainment district. Uh, the Block is another one that's part of our total entertainment package, which is the three businesses along 3rd Street, the promenade there that's across from the Lady Lock. We'll touch on the CIM in a minute. Um, the Pint is one that Paul Hennessy's has done as part of the Hennessy's Tavern. 
Of course, he's done Mickey fins as well. And this, this really is a good shot because it just shows you how successful this project has been in terms of not only the project but the, just the total foot traffic that you see uh, on a given night along that portion of FSC. Canyon Club's another one that's in the Four Queens. Uh, and then Fremont Square, uh, formerly known as Neonopolis. Um, this is the new deli that's in the base that's been uh, entered into a lease that's open and operating, as well as the new sushi restaurant. And there's going to be another, uh, as um, Joshi had indicated at the last meeting, uh, Italian restaurant, and we continue to work with them on parking commitments in order to nail down uh, uh, Telemundo as well. Uh, moving into East and West Las Vegas, the Alpha Mega continues to work on their project on 1501 North Decatur. Um, this has been a struggle given today's fi financing issues with housing. Um, they have worked diligently on this and through no fault of theirs, the housing market's gone sideways in terms of financing and we're working through some creative ways to get this project moving forward. Uh, Edmond Town Center, we recently had a, an announcement that um, uh, KB Mart would be building a buy-low market in the former Vaughn space at Edmond Town Center. We're going to be bringing the incentive package forward to the redevelopment agency at our next meeting on this project. Bank of America has br broken ground and actually well into the construction of their new branch at the corner of MLK and Washington on formerly owned redevelopment agency property. There was a recent groundbreaking there. And then a uh, few no new ones, the Ahern Tower on the southwest corner of MLK and Bonanza that you've entitled. And the redevelopment of the Moulin Rouge property. Uh, this is another entitled project uh, which really seeks to revitalize the, the site of the former Moulin Rouge Casino as a new uh, boutique casino there as well. Enterprise Park, this is an overview shot of Enterprise Park and all the different things that have happened inside Enterprise Park. I'll walk you through those very quickly. The RLT Corporation's McDonald's uh, corporate office and training facility, the FBI facility, the Cox Regional Headquarters are now well underway in terms of the renovation of that building for conversion to their regional headquarters. Uh, the Urban Chamber of Commerce works diligently on meeting all their design requirements and in the permitting process to start construction on their facility. The Expertise School of Beauty has been open and operating. And FIT, the Foundation for an Independent Tomorrow, will have their grand opening on their facility next week. Um, we have one site, we actually have two sites that are available, uh, the 7.1 acre site um, in the interior portion of the park, we're actually in the process of confecting a re request for proposal to look at how we can uh, seek redevelopment of this parcel in a manner that would be job creating as much as possible consistent with the original vision of a business park at Enterprise Park. Casinos, uh, the El Cortez um, has just been phenomenal in terms of the upgrades that they've done. Uh, the lower right-hand corner is the promenade now that they've opened up with their new signage out on Las Vegas Boulevard that takes you back into their casino. This has been an incredible improvement in that part of the city. They have a new port cashier. They've redone the inside of the building, and their plans are for a new uh, boutique hotel as part of the Ogden House in the lower left-hand picture. The Golden Nugget is underway on their redevelopment of their major tower and their gaming floor. It's a incredible redevelopment. And they continue to set the tone as the major flagship casino downtown. And uh, actually, yesterday, we put the finishing touches on our agreement with CIM. We're wrapping that up uh, today and tomorrow. We are working diligently to get this on, bring it forward the agenda of the next council meeting. If not, it will be the next meeting thereafter, because we've reached agreement on the major business points on this deal. This is their master plan on the left that they presented to you in a previous meeting. And then the site is in the lower right-hand corner uh, that shows the, the Mob Museum site, the post office, and all the property surrounding that, which is the subject of redevelopment under that agreement. Other projects, the Historic Fifth Street School is now really starting to wrap up. Um, this should be complete uh, sometime the end of June, early July. 
you can see that it's it's moving right along. It's we should hit that completion date, and has really turned out to just be a very classy, high quality facility and building. The Callister Reynolds Law Office Building is another small office building that really shows the strength of the office market in that core area near the regional justice complex and all the, the whole justice center, the, the two courthouses. Uh, this is a little uh, VIP that you approved on uh, Las Vegas Boulevard, the Studio 810 facility. And the Bulldog site, uh, that site, the City Mark has released their interest in development of that site. Um, they really have indicated they would like to focus on completion of the Jewel project. So now we'll work in earnest to resolicit interest in the development of that site. We've had some fairly strong office development interest in that location because of the, the courthouse facilities and we'll uh, probably put together an RFP and put that back out on the street for solic sol solicitation of proposals. Uh, this is a shot that you've not seen um, of the, and maybe it had been presented to you previously, but not in the part of this PowerPoint of the RTC zero modal facility. That's um, their plan that for that fifth block is part of Live Work Las Vegas, uh, where there would be a building that would front um, in the background there on First Street, and then the intermodal facility that would use that block. Now this is the block where we're looking and evaluating at the possibility of having an aerial parking option in the air rights above this block. Uh, given the low density of development of the intermodal terminal, one of the options is to put air rights parking there as the support of City Hall. Of course, that's all part of the RTC's aggressive new package of transit improvements downtown, one of which is the bus rapid transit system. This shows the vehicle they're going to be using at the right that will be part of that system, and on the left, the route that will connect the north end of the strip up through downtown along a major corridor around under Ogden into the Union Park area, dedicating two center lanes of the street for transit development. This gives you a shot looking at, what, at how that will look like. This is a shot running down the Grand Central Corridor. This is the part that's actually been under construction that will convert those two center lanes with full stations to a virtual light rail type project. It'll simply be rubber tired, but will look, act, and feel like a light rail system. Of course, our retail downtown Las Vegas program has been well underway. Uh, we are in the midst of branding downtown, working collectively with all the developers who have ground floor retail space available for rent under the umbrella image of the retail downtown Las Vegas. Um, one of the admissions is to attract a grocery store as part of that campaign. And we're really looking at a number of things, incentives through our VIP program, expedited city assistance. We have a whole package of market information we put together to make available to retailers to sell them on a downtown location and as well as providing business retention assistance for any existing retailers who might want to stay downtown and relocate in one of those uh, ground floor retail plates. And this gives you an idea. This is the ground floor of Streamline to show you what I mean by the availability of new high quality retail space. If you have approved the Centennial Plan that says that the ground floor on all new projects will have an active retail face on these projects. So as these new developments occur, it creates new retail space and that creates new opportunities to bring retailers in and, and active ground floor use into the downtown area. So what we've done is we've got all of these different developers that have plates in the Jewel Project, in the um, Streamline, Soho Lofts, Newport Lofts, all these different projects to work together to market the whole package to attract new retailers downtown. So with that, that's the end of my report. I know it's rather lengthy, but uh, we had a little extra time this morning, and if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer those. Thank you. It was a great report. Uh, all good news. Uh, that was terrific. Uh, are there any comments or questions? Mayor Goodman? Yes, uh, Councilor Barlow. Yes, Mr. Adams, thank you very much for the great presentation. And one thing that caught my attention was that uh, you mentioned within your slide that at the end of the build-out, it would, uh, the cost of all the projects would be approximately $15 billion. Right. And that leads me to my next question as far as how does the $15 billion now equate into employment for residents that live within the city of Las Vegas 
and also the number of residents combined uh, from the residential slides that you've shown. What, what is the total number of residents? You know, I, and, I, and I have to... They're built out. I, don't, I have to apologize. I don't have that number at the top of my head, but we do track that. I, what I, I think I'll promise to do in my next report, I will add into the report on that summary slide how those numbers convert to what we perceive to be projected employment. Because we, what we do, we, we maintain a status report that we draw these numbers on every project, and we've got an estimated employment on every single project. And, uh, and we can pull those numbers down to a total and add those into that slide so that we can report that at our next meeting. I just don't have that number off the top of my head. It is very significant because I, I think if you remember um, in the uh, Live Work presentation, just those four projects uh, that we put together, we were looking at projected employment of 13,000 employees. And when you add in all the others, I would suggest that we're probably going to be probably almost doubling the employment downtown. I think we have something like 30 some thousand existing employees in in the greater downtown area and we're probably going to end up very close to doubling it when you look at um, the total investment that's planned over long term in downtown. And I appreciate that because <clears throat> for me it uh, it would give the uh, the council as well as the listening audience, the, the viewers in the audience, an opportunity to actually see where we currently are as a city downtown today. And once the complete build out exists, uh, when we talk about live, work and play, that's the big picture as far as the number of residents that actually live in the downtown. Now they have an opportunity to work in the downtown and as well as entertain themselves right here without having to travel, which basically now ties back into transportation. Right. So if you can present that. We'll, uh, we'll add those to our next, next report. I would, I would and uh, I would that. like to, uh, to do this, if I may. Uh, I know every time we have this presentation by you, the council members come up to me at the noon hour or right after we're through the redevelopment agency meeting, and they say, wow, isn't it great? Uh, we get these kinds of briefings uh, periodically. Uh, Mr. Adams will come up to my office and he'll brief me on all the projects on a weekly basis, if not more than once a week. And then every Monday afternoon, without fail, from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock, we meet with the Newland folks talking about the development of Union Park, uh, just to be sure that we're not going to violate the open meeting law. If anybody wants to come to these meetings, please feel free to do so, because I think you'll get the same feeling that you do after Mr. Adams makes his presentation as to the type of energy that's being put into these various projects in the town. It's very uplifting. You know, uh, I guess the rule of thumb is on redevelopment, if you have one out of ten projects succeed, then you're successful. Uh, I, I think we're doing a little better than that, maybe much better than that, but you also need the energy from successes to keep us pushing forward. So everybody's invited, of course, to attend any of these meetings. Uh, we really, um, uh, I, I was briefed yesterday uh, by Newland because I missed the Monday meeting. Uh, on their residential efforts, and I think you minimize uh, what they're doing. They actually have been throughout the entire western United States looking at various projects in San Diego, uh, uh, Vancouver in Canada, um, uh, Seattle, Portland, uh, and uh, looked at the best of the best and the worst of the worst. And they're now composing a, a program that really uh, was so pleasing to me because I think it's going to be like a magnet bringing people into mm -hmm. their development at the Union Park site. It really was phenomenal, the kind of detail yes. that they're going into. They're doing it scientifically. I, they say in the past Las Vegas has built basically on emotion, but now they're becoming very, very careful about what decisions they're making as far as uh, um, furniture, fixtures, uh, creating a neighborhood in effect. I mean, they're really going about it very scientifically. It's very exciting. So just wanted to tell the council that they're more than welcome to join me at any time they want, uh, just so uh, we don't have more than three of us there at any given time. Thank you. Mayor Goodman, yes. mind. Scott, just as kind of a follow-up from uh, Councilman Barlow, I think Councilman Barlow's question is an excellent one, which is, can you give us some information about how many jobs we're going to have downtown? But let's be real here. A lot of the people that are going to be working in these uh, jobs, 
the new jobs that we're creating are not going to be able to afford to live downtown because I think that most of the residences we're talking about, the condominiums and things like that, are going to be uh, fairly expensive. So what I'd like to do is just uh, continue a dialogue, if you will, about where we're going to be providing, and this just not on the city level, but on the on valley-wide level, where we're going to be providing um, places to live for the people who are going to be coming into our downtown area to work. Sure, sure. Um, and I think I've said this in prior meetings that uh, one of our biggest challenges in the redevelopment area has been the production of attainable housing. I wouldn't use the term affordable. Attainable, that meaning housing that can be purchased or rented by people who work downtown. And one of the challenges we face is the high cost of construction in this marketplace. Um, it's starting to correct itself a little bit, but not enough to overcome um, the feasibility of producing attainable housing. Um, there's, a, there's a huge interest out in the real estate investment community of producing attainable housing. You just can't make the numbers work. When you combine the cost of land with the cost of construction, you end up with a sales or rental price that just is what it is, and that's what they end up producing. We could get there through incredible subsidies by the redevelopment agency, but you get to a point where that subsidy is so great you're virtually buying down a significant cost of the portion of the unit cost. And the, the proposals that have been put forth to us have been so extensive for that buy down that we just couldn't warrant that. So we've been looking at the most creative ways we possibly can to do that. Now, fortunately, we're seeing some correction of land price and correction of construction costs. And, and we may be able to get there here better than we've been in the past over the short run. Now, with that being said, in the regional market, you're seeing a huge correction, huge correction in values. I mean, you saw it in today's paper again uh, that, that we're now seeing single-family home prices drop to levels that approach the pre-2003-2004 run-up. Uh, I know I personally was in uh, development uh, this last weekend where new construction is now at $100 a square foot on a base price, which doesn't make me feel good at what I paid for my house, but as far as producing an affordable product now, we're, we're there. We're, we're, we're certainly there much better than we were two or three years ago. We're at a, a level in the regional market that was pre-run-up prices. So we're much more affordable than we've been in a long time. And Mayor, if I could, and I understand, Scott, and thank you for that, but I s still would like to receive some information in the future about our rental inventory. Sure. Because I understand the, the median price of housing is correcting a little, and we're going back to those pre-2003 prices where perhaps some people can, uh, can purchase a home for uh, 250 to 300000 but there's still a lot of people who are going to work in our downtown area that won't be able to afford to buy that kind of home. So where are these people going to live that are going to work in our downtown area? Sure. Okay. Can I put that? Yes. Uh, Scott, could you explain uh, a little bit about this project that LiveWorks uh, has been talking about building? down at, uh, I think it's 3rd and uh, Charleston. Uh, they're going to have, uh, I think, 565 units of affordable, attainable rental property. Right. Uh, it's totally amazing. They're also going to do this same thing over at uh, the five blocks, I believe. There's, that's one of the projects that, I've, that I'm talking about that I think we may be getting to that point where we can make the numbers work and actually start getting there. Um, they're planning a project through use of innovative building techniques that would, through certain modular construction and, and creative ways to build a building, bring that cost of construction down to a point where, given their land basis and, and their cost of construction, they could actually bring a rental rate down within some level of reach of people who, who uh, uh, work downtown. Um, it, it's interesting. There is a shadow rental market downtown. Uh, which is the condos that were purchased by investors who are now putting those out for rent. But when you take a four or five hundred thousand dollar condo unit and your mortgage payment 
put that back out as a rental, you're talking $3,000, $3,500 a month. That is clearly not within reach of anybody that's working downtown. Except the mayor. <laughs> I, could, I could afford it. Yes. <laughs> There's a few people that can afford that, but most of us can't afford that. Um, what we're, the target number that most developers are trying to get to is under $2 a square foot per month. Uh, now e that even is still high. Um, you know, with their, that would mean that you would rent a, um, a 600 square foot, 700 square foot apartment for 1,200 bucks. Uh, but that 1,200 bucks is close to where the market is out in the suburbs. And so that's the numbers that they're trying to get to. Where they've been coming in, given the current cost of construction and and land values are three dollars per foot per month, which means that 600 square foot unit would rent for 1,800 bucks, and they don't feel they can market them at that those rates. So um, there there's they're really trying to come at it from different directions, um, and um, that's one of those that we've been working diligently with to continue to work the numbers on it to get it to a point where it'll hopefully it'll come in at a level where it'll be affordable. I, I was told excuse me, Mary, I, I was told by Mr. Lieberman that they're going to try to have this started uh, uh, in the spring of 2009. Yeah. 2009. Mm -hmm. yes. Yep. Any other comments or questions? Councilwoman. Yes. Um, you were talking about $100 a square foot construction costs. Well, I, I didn't know quite to what you were referring. Well, what I'm talking about is the <coughs> out of downtown market now, the suburban residential market, new construction um, has now dropped. I were I was in some units this weekend where you can buy a house for a hundred dollars a square foot base price. Hundred dollars a square foot, which is I. Uh, we were two hundred dollars a square foot three years ago on a base price unit out in the in the suburbs. So it's the new construction market has almost been cut in half. I mean, there were units thirty five hundred square foot homes for three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Now, what we're finding in some of the areas of the ward I represent, a lot of vacancies in even in the workforce housing. We're finding more of that, not in senior uh, affordable housing, but in the workforce housing. We're finding a lot of, well, 25 to 40 percent vacancy rate, right? In apartments and condos and right and rental homes. Is yeah. that what you're finding? I'm just trying well, to match it what, with what I've been told. Yeah, you know, and what if you read the the literature now that the current housing market information that supply demand relationship is starting to to go in favor of the renter and the buyer. There's such an excess of inventory now of both rental product and and sell product that it's becoming much, much more affordable. And when I discussed that with the businessmen, I asked, well, will it go back to what it was? You know, are we just leveling out and then we're going to go back up to the high amounts we had? And what I've been being told is that no, because we will not ha see that degree of rapid increase that we had in the past. Right. Is this the information you're that, getting also? That's, there's differences of opinion on that. I mean, you know, you're, you're talking to analysts and you're crystal balling the future, so I don't know that anybody really knows what's going to happen. Um, it, um, what it does, though, is it, when you start bringing those costs down to that point, it will make it very difficult to build at those lower prices. So we could get to a point where... When all that excess inventory is either bought or rented at those lower numbers, then it would. They can't build it for that anymore, and there's no choice but to run it back up. Thank you. All right. Any other comments or questions? Uh, I uh, see Mr. Vincent out there. Whenever I see him, of course, I uh, always think of the glass being half full rather than half empty. And uh, I actually see this as a wonderful time, to be honest with you. Maybe I'm the eternal optimist, but I think. <laughs> Tremendous opportunities exist now for people to buy homes. Uh, the prices are uh, uh, at a level that we haven't seen in years. And I don't know where we get the idea that everybody has to have a new home. Uh, I don't know where that came from in Las Vegas. It seems like everybody has to have a new home. It, it, that's not the way life works. There are a lot of bargains out there right now. And you get yourself a little fixer-upper. That's what they do. 
you fix it up, and you live there, you have a good time, and then you can sell it and buy a, a, a new home maybe. But um, I, I think this is a great time for people to invest in downtown Las Vegas. That's just my view. All right, uh, make, I have a uh, motion to accept the report, please. So moved, Your Honor. All right, let's vote, please. Post. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, this is item number five, citizens participation. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the Redevelopment Agency. No subject may be acted upon by the Redevelopment Agency unless that subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, please come up. Be happy to hear from you. Anybody want to be heard? Seeing none, uh, the meeting is adjourned and our morning session will begin. Let's give the clerk about 